Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. We are going to discuss about another signaling mechanism known as TGF beta pathway. We also call it as SMAD signaling pathway. First, we will talk a bit about its introduction. First point we have is the till now our discussion was about receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, which phosphorylate the target proteins on tyrosine residues. Okay, in this video we will talk about receptor kinases that phosphorylate on the serine residues of the target proteins and hence they are called as receptor serine kinases now the receptor in these pathways are called as tgf beta receptor or transforming growth factor beta receptor and the signaling molecule we have is the tgf beta or the transforming growth factor beta now what is the main function of this TG TGF beta? It phosphorylates and activates certain transcriptional factors which are known as SMADs. Okay, the whole pathway is based on these SMADs. Now what these activated SMADs do? They regulate several growth and differentiation pathways. The next point we have is the types of SMADs. There are three types of SMADs. The first one is the R SMADs or the receptor regulated SMADs which are regulated by the receptor itself. We have two of them that is the SMADs 2 and SMAD 3. In this pathway we are going to refer these SMADs as 2 or 3. The second one we have is the co-SMADs. The example of this SMAD is the SMAD 4. Now what is the function of these SMADs? They help the SMADs 2 or 3 or the R SMADs to achieve their function. The third one we have is the I SMADs. I stand for inhibitory. So they are inhibitory SMADs. They actually inhibit the binding of the receptor regulated SMADs to their receptors. In this way, they do not allow the pathway to operate. In this pathway, there are three types of receptors, the R1, R2 and R3. The ligand is going to bind either to the R3 receptor or R2 receptor, but you have to note it would not bind to the R1 receptor. One thing you have to note more, the signaling cascade would go down from R1 receptor only. So we have to know what is the function of the R1 receptor. This receptor once it is activated, it would phosphorylate the target protein which is present in the cytoplasm known as SMAD2 or 3. Initially this R1 receptor is inhibited due to its juxta membrane domain which is present between the R1 receptor here and the kinase domain. So this juxta membrane segment this one is inhibiting its kinase domain right. The ligand binding to the receptor 2 here the ligand can also bind to the receptor 3 suppose uh, the ligand is binding here on the R2 receptor. The binding of the ligand to the R2 receptor would recruit this R1 receptor towards itself okay so once this is here the kinase domain of the r2 receptor would phosphorylate the kinase domain of the r1 receptor and the inhibition is gone and now this r1 receptor is activated the activated r1 receptor would phosphorylate its target protein this is smad 2 or 3 okay now we need to know the structure of this smad 2 3 protein this is composed of two domains, the MH2 domain in green color and the MH1 domain in red color. Okay, the MH domain is the one which is the DNA binding domain. Through this domain, this MAD23 protein would bind to the DNA present in the nucleus. Okay, this domain also contains the NLS that is the nuclear localization signal through which the protein would go into the nucleus and start or initiate the transcription of the genes. But before this SMAD23 protein is phosphorylated, the MH2 domain and the MH1 domain, they are associated to each other in such a way that the NLS signal is covered. This is not exposed. 
the phosphorylation of this smat 2 3 protein expose this nls signal and now the phosphorylation is done our protein is here this is phosphorylated okay and after it is phosphorylated this is joined by other proteins known as smad 4 this is the cosmad which helps the smad 2 3 protein to achieve its function Along with this, another protein known as important beta in green color, this hexagonal structure, it also comes here. Why? Because this NLS here is not sufficient to escort this protein into the nucleus. So the importing beta, importing means from import. It would import the whole structure which is composed of the SMAD23 protein and SMAD4 into the nucleus. They are taken into the nucleus with the help of importing beta okay once this whole complex is into the nucleus we no longer need the importing beta because its function is achieved and what do we do here the importing beta protein would be bound by ran gtp and the binding of the ran gtp the importing beta would release the hexagonal important beta after this the smad 2 3 protein dimer with the smad 4 that is the cosmad will bind with the help of the uh, dna binding domain of the smad 2 3 protein here okay and other transcriptional factors would come here that is the tfe3 and co-activators and they would initiate the transcription of the gene and we have that gene here is pa1 that is a plasminogen activator inhibitor so once this transcription is done what we are going to do with this mad 2 3 protein we oh, we need to stop this pathway now so this smad 2 3 protein is acted upon by a phosphatase which would dephosphorylate the smad 2 3 into the initial protein which was here okay